Hi everybody, this is my second video about the Yocto project and open embedded on Raspberry Pi 5. In the first episode, I showed you how to build core image base based on the Yocto project long term support release ScarpGov, flash it on a micro SD card and boot it on Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, this was a very simple demonstration, basically the first thing that you're supposed to do when you are building your own custom uh, GNU Linux distribution. Now we are proceeding with baby steps. So the second thing that I'm going to do is to enable SSH, which will allow me to access this Raspberry Pi 5 over the network. Here is the hardware that I'm going to use in this video. Of course, again, the star of the video is Raspberry Pi 5. I will also need a micro SD card, a USB-C power supply, a network cable and Raspberry Pi the Big Probe which I will use just at the beginning to check the IP address. I'm pretty sure the subscribers of my YouTube channel are uh, familiar with Secure Shell also known as SSH but let's do a proper quick introduction. This is a cryptographic network protocol with a client server architecture. It provides remote access to uh, Unix based and Linux of course computers. It also supports file transfer uh, via the secure copy protocol SCP. Most of the action with the Yocto project and Open Embedded actually happens in a Linux terminal. So here we are again on the desktop computer that I'm using to cross compile images for Raspberry Pi 5. I'm going to enter the location where I built core image base for the previous episode and I'm going to make some modifications there. I initialize the build environment again and I'm going to use a tool called bitbake get var to check the content of a variable within my build environment. The name of the variable is extra underscore image underscore features and as of the moment it contains only the value debug tweaks. After that let's open conf slash local dot conf and at the bottom of this file let's extend the content of extra image features variable by appending to it SSH server drop bear. The Yocto project open embedded and bitbake support overwrite style syntax with the three keywords append, prepend and remove. To use it set a column after the variable name and after that use the keyword. In our case we're gonna use the append keyword. Keep in mind it's very important to add a space at the beginning of the new value that we are appending to the existing value of the variable. So after adding this line for SSH server drop bear to uh, conf slash local dot conf save this file again using the bitbake get var2 I'm going to quickly verify that the new value of the variable has been properly set the line that I have just added to my local dot conf will install the drop bare minimal SSH server after saving the configurational change in local dot conf I have to type in the terminal bitbake core image base. As you know from the previous video, this is the uh, very basic image that we're using for testing purposes. I'm reusing the already downloaded files as well as the share state and the temporary directory which speeds up the build. If you remember the first time when I built this image from scratch, I had to wait for a very long time. However, in this case, we have a very uh, quick build because it's incremental and uh, Bitbake is building just the new components. Uh, related to SSH. Thanks to the magic of video editing I'll speed up further this process. As a result we get the weak image that I have to flash on the micro SD card. After Bitbake finished building a core image base I have to proceed with the next step and flash it on a micro SD card. This is a boring step that I've covered in the previous video so I'll just skip it and I'll directly show you how to use SSH uh, on Raspberry Pi 5. We're gonna boot the Raspberry Pi 5 again from a micro SD card with our own image, however the new version that contains the drop bear SSH server. Let's proceed and assemble the hardware that I have on my desk. I'm gonna plug the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi 5. I have already flashed the core image base on it. I'm gonna use the Raspberry Pi the big probe just at the beginning to check the IP address and after that I'm going to log in over SSH. Because of this I'm going to also plug a uh, network cable and connect the Raspberry Pi 5 to my local area network. Uh, finally I'm gonna plug the uh, USB-C power supply to turn on the Raspberry Pi 5. 
Let me do this once again so we can have a better look from another angle. On the right side of the screen you see my laptop with the Ubuntu Linux distribution. I open the terminal and inside the terminal I started the screen application for serial communication. From my previous videos you already know the drill with the Raspberry Pi debug probe and the serial communication for early debugging. For next videos I have in mind to do some technical deep dive about uh, the bootloader and the kernel and debugging them with serial communication. However, now I'm just going to log in as root without password and check the IP address that has been assigned to the Raspberry Pi 5 from my router. I typed in the IP command with the argument A which lists all the network interfaces available on Raspberry Pi 5. As you can see an IP has been assigned to the LAN port which is enumerated as ETH0 and the IP address that I have locally is 192 dot one six eight dot five dot one nine five i don't need serial communication anymore so i'm going to remove the raspberry pi the book pro of course there are many different ways how to check the ip address that has been assigned to the raspberry pi 5 and if you don't have the raspberry pi the book probe you can just have a look at the information at your router after that, on the terminal on my laptop, I'm going to use the ssh command uh, to log in as user root using the IP address that I've just retrieved. This way, I can log in the Raspberry Pi 5 through the network. Because I'm connecting to this Raspberry Pi 5 with this operating system for the very first time, I have to confirm the RSA key fingerprint. After that, I'm typing in some very basic commands to check the Linux kernel version and the operating system version. We know that this is built based on the Octo Project LTS release ScarpGov, but it's always good to check that what we expect is actually happening. By the way, for this image, we are using a Linux kernel version 6.6 .6 that has been built from the fork maintained by Raspberry Pi in GitHub. This has been all done uh, thanks to the recipe uh, available in Meta uh, Raspberry Pi BSP layer. Well, SSH works as expected. We can log in remotely to the Raspberry Pi 5 and everything looks good. One last demonstration. We have internet connection, so let's ping example.com. As you understand, you're seeing the display of my laptop, but I'm actually executing all these commands on the Raspberry Pi 5 because I have logged in remotely as user root over SSH. As a conclusion, what have we hopefully all learned from this video? We have a good basic understanding how SSH works and how we can access remotely a Raspberry Pi 5 over the network. We learned how to enable SSH using the drop bear SSH server in our custom Linux distribution built with the Yocto project and open embedded. And along the way, I've demonstrated you how to use the bitbake get var command line tool so that you can check the value of a variable within your build environment. Thank you very much for watching this video. As you have seen, it is very easy to add SSH support on an image that's built with the Yocto project and open embedded. Uh, I'm trying to do baby steps here. I have uh, in mind covering other topics such as uh, using um, virtualization and Docker containers, sharing details about the Raspberry Pi fork of the Linux kernel that we use in these images, switching to U-Boot, uh, doing uh, software over the air updates and so on. If you have any technical questions or recommendations for next video related to the Yocto project and Open Embedded, please leave a comment below. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please consider subscribing uh, to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.